How's it going everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the top stocks and the top ETFs that I'm watching and that I'm looking to trade heading into this week in the stock market. And I also want to go over the stock market's performance in general here over the past couple of days and what the stock market futures are looking like right now as they did open about 40 minutes prior to me filming this video video. And another important thing I want to go over today, guys, is crude oil. There's a lot, a lot of news around crude oil. This is honestly... This, this could honestly drop the markets even lower, so it's very important keeping an eye on it. So, a lot to go over in this video. If you guys do enjoy this video, hit that like button for me. Consider subscribing to the channel and also join our Discord group chat and our Facebook group linked down below in the description box. And those are free, so get in there. You have nothing to lose. So let's get right into today's video, just simply looking at the S&P's performance over the past five days. Nothing crazy. We're going to go over this in under one minute. So pretty much we had a red week. It wasn't too crazy of a red week. I believe the S&P was down about 3% from last week's um, Monday to Friday session. And we can see we were trading in this range heading into uh, the latter half of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And this is very important, guys, because heading into tomorrow, and especially with these futures, kind of what we're going to see overnight when we monitor them uh, heading into the session, you know, these levels, 2520 and 2450, are extremely important when determining the direction of the S&P. So tomorrow in the morning, and again, when we're monitoring these futures, I want to see, are we going to potentially test 25-20 and break out into the session tomorrow? Or are we going to maybe break 2450, which in that case, like I've mentioned in previous videos, I could definitely see SPX, the S&P 500, go down to 2300. And if we break that level, that is where we may be testing that low that we did see back on the 23rd of March being around 2190. So in general, the S&P 3% roughly down last week. And those are two major levels that I'm watching. 2450 on the downside, 2520 on the upside. Now, let's get into the these, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, these futures, so we can see kind of what the sentiment is here over the weekend. So the ES, the slash ES, E-mini S&P 500 index futures, they're actually up 1.4% right now, up about 35 points. So this is moving up, guys. Last couple of futures sessions, I believe uh, the previous Sunday, we had a major drawdown, and a bunch of the previous Sundays before that, we had major drawdowns. So it's interesting today, not that this has any correlation, but it's interesting that we're up today. So if this holds, obviously, into the morning tomorrow, this could open up maybe some short opportunities in a couple of stocks, or maybe even in the SPY, a especially if you are short the market. Typically, if you're short the market, you like getting in on these rallies, right? Especially if you're looking at them as bull traps. That's ideal. That's how a lot of bears make money. So this could be a setup um, tomorrow. This could be what's setting up. Maybe a little rally before we end up dumping off. But then again, the futures change overnight, which is why we monitor them. And for all we know, they can be red in a couple hours from now. So that's why we watch them. Um, I watch them, and I know you guys do, religiously. So the NASDAQ up 1.5% right now, up 112 points. And same with the S&P, this could be opening up an opportunity maybe in SQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is going down. So let's say we get that pop in the NASDAQ, we think it's a bull trap, we could end up getting into SQQQ, making some good money on a leveraged ETF. And taking a look 
at the Dow Jones. Uh, the Dow Jones futures, they're up not as much as the S&P and the NASDAQ, but still up about 240 points, up roughly 1.2%. So overall, the futures right now are up, and that's interesting because crude oil, which we'll get into right now, is getting squashed. Take a look at crude oil, guys. And this has been, again, the talk of the town recently. We've had oil companies going bankrupt. We've had major companies cut dividends. We've had the whole industry crushed, right? Crude oil right now is down 8%. And if you guys recall, it was under $20 a barrel just, what was it, like last week? And President Trump came out saying, let me read this tweet because I do have some notes here on my uh, notes app. He said that he spoke and, and, and uh, with Russia and the Saudis <clears throat> that they're going to do 10 to 15 billion barrel uh, a barrel cut per day. And of course this this is not uh, true, but it, it sent up the, the the price of crude oil like crazy. This day we saw USO, the United States oil uh, fund went, it went crazy. a bunch of the stocks went crazy. This thing had a roughly 30% move, I believe in one day and Honestly, this is not good in my personal opinion because, listen, you know, they're they're having an OPEC meeting. It was supposed to be Monday. Now I believe it's being pushed back, which is why this is actually falling right now in my opinion because for, honestly, at this point, for there to be a deal, you know, this is what oil needs at this point. There needs to be a deal and we need to see what the numbers of actual barrels per day they're going to cut now and now since trump set the 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 target pretty high here 10 15 million i was reading that they're only going to do roughly and that's if they agree here they're only going to do like two barrels three barrel cut per day so trump pretty much set the uh 10 million two to three million uh not not two to three guys two to three million right so trump pretty much set the bar pretty high to the point that it's going to be a disappointment either way because if they don't cut 10 to 15 per day, you know, this is going to drop. So that's why a lot of people are, and even if they do do 10 to 15 million barrels per day in terms of cutting, it's still going to drop in my opinion because the underlying fundamentals are that nobody is using oil. There's a lot of a lot of industries that were huge users of oil that are completely stopped right now, right? Well, stop for the most part. Like airlines, huge consumers of oil, right? Cruise lines, they're completely stopped right now. And that's just two out of a bunch. So there's a lot of problems right now with oil. A lot, a lot of problems. And Again, if they don't even come to an agreement, let's say on, on the 9th, I believe, is when the meeting got rescheduled for, that's going to be even worse for oil as well to the point that it can keep going down, which is why we're seeing this target of 5 to $10 per barrel. So tomorrow, guys, it's going to be interesting, right? Crude oil is still holding its uptrend right now based on this breakout on the hourly chart, right? We got the massive bull pull here, and then we kind of consolidated downwards a bit, and uh, we got another massive run. Now we're getting a pull down, but it's still a higher low, right? We're still in the uptrend holding that 50 SMA. So in my opinion, to go short oil, technically speaking, I'd need to see a break below 24.50, but then again, if we wanted to get in oil, uh, uh, sh I mean, uh, short oil, maybe a bit early, I could see a $25, point, uh, $25 break being an entry point, maybe in, uh, you know, some puts or something like that on USO. And uh, we'll end up seeing what happen, uh, happens tomorrow, guys. And a bunch of stocks that I'm watching, ETFs based on crude oil. USO, you just heard me mention that one. You know, this is a United States oil fund. This could be an opportunity to go short on um, this upcoming week, right? We're seeing it's right near uh, a four-hour, a six-month resistance here on the four-hour chart. 
that is interesting. We may be heading back down. And again, now that crude oil is gapping down, I feel like this is going to be gapping down in the pre-market session. And another thing that we were talking about in the Discord chat is if USO gets to the point where it's getting back down to 450 you know, $5, you know, under $5, this could be an opportunity to get in some longer term call options, maybe some medium term ones like October, maybe even December. I was actually looking at ones for January 2021, because the truth is, although we can speculate all we want, um, the truth is the price of oil is not going to stay down forever. I know it's impossible to time it, but there's going to be a point where it does does come back up and uh, just having a longer term call option to have some exposure to the possibility of it coming back up, you know, which again, eventually it will, but the timing part is hard. I think it's smart in general just to have some exposure to that. And another couple of stocks, XOM, ExxonMobil, this will probably be, uh, probably be down a decent amount tomorrow. Chevron, I think it's a, uh, C, I don't know, not Churchill Ventures, that's not the ticker symbol. What's Chevron's ticker symbol? I always forget. It's CVX. There we go. CVX, this will probably be down as well tomorrow. Another one I'm watching is Occidental Petroleum, um, which was actually up 1.8% on Friday. Crude oil did well on Friday, um, but with crude oil again being down 8%, this will probably take a hit tomorrow. And in general, those are a couple of crude oil, um, just oil energy stocks and just some thoughts on on crude oil in general and realize guys there's a lot of moving parts to this and I'm not even going to come here and claim that I know everything about oil like I've mentioned um, in, in a previous video I said that before so don't expect it to be you know quick easy to the point where it's going to happen, there's going to be a deal, and then everything is going to fly back up. There's a lot of more moving parts. It's a lot more complicated than that, from my understanding, to the point where they're calling all the oil producing nations to this OPEC plus plus meeting is what they've been calling it online because uh, the United States is going to be in it. Russia is going to be in it. So it's going to be an interesting time for sure. So let's get into some other stocks now very quickly. We talked about Zoom last week. It took a beating from 175 down to where we are now. But overall, this was a pretty healthy pull down. Honestly, guys, it, the hype we kind of kicked out some of the hypers, you know, from the stock. They they bought it up. They pushed it up to 175. A lot of them got kicked out, in my opinion, now that we're back at 128. There's still some hype in the stock, but overall, I think it's prone for another rally, um, especially if we get over 130. I think it's a breakout stock, breakout potential. Not saying it's going to happen, but I think there's breakout potential if we get above 130 there. And CLX is another stock where it's at that breakout point. It's right there, right at about 178 bucks. And we talked about this one a couple videos ago. I took my eye off of it a little bit, a couple days to be honest, guys. But now that I'm looking back at it, now that we got some more data in the charts here, we can see this is looking pretty bullish in my eyes. We broke 178, got to about 181. Now we're, we've pulled down and we're right around that 178 support. So I'm interested tomorrow, do we hold? Do we pop up? Do we end up selling back down to the low 170s, which would be negative if we pop up and maybe get to 178? 50, 179. That could be an entry point here on CLX that I'm watching. Nonetheless, it's interesting at this level what it's going to do, which direction it is going to pick. And another thing I want to talk about in today's video is notice these companies that are still holding on pretty well out there. We ha we have a lot of these cruise lines, obviously airlines, a lot of these, you know, non-profit unprofitable you know, smaller tech stocks down 80%, 40%, 50%. But there's a lot of stocks out there that are doing very well and they're even hiring people in these tough economic times. They're not cutting jobs, they're actually hiring people, which goes to show that, you know, there's there's some strong companies out there that 
can hire while others are firing. And that is a very good sign in tough economic times. So a couple of these companies are Target, TGT, and honestly, this stock's beaten up, let's be honest. But a lot of the, the beating came from before this whole CV situation. If you guys recall, Target, this is going back a couple months. So the new reviewers, you might not know this unless you did your research on Target yourselves. But back a couple months ago, they had disappointing, I believe it was holiday, holiday sales. And that sent the stock down. That cratered the stock. You can see it. It was right around the new year. This is when that came out. The stock went from 124 down to about 115. So when this whole CV craziness started getting crazier, this stock went from 115 down to about 92. So it is a pretty rough beating of about 20%. But compared to the market, it's holding up a lot better. And again, they're, they're a company target that I believe they're not going anywhere. They're going to make it through this time. And if my memory is correct, they're hiring roughly 25,000 people, something like that, which is incredible, employing people that, quite frankly, need a job right now because, quite frankly, many people have gotten laid off, unfortunately, right? So Target's great. Amazon is the next one, which... Again, this this stock is incredible, right? I bought it in my M1 account back when it was... I, I forget, actually. No, it was before this big run-up to 2100 It was back when it was $1,600. Um, I bought a little bit there. It rallied up. It took a dump back down. But overall, I'm still green on that position despite this insane drop in the overall markets. And despite the big drop, Amazon is down only 12%. Not even because that was let me let me let me double check this. It hit 2100 before the CV got crazy. When the CV got crazy, honestly, it's not even down from when the CV got crazy. It did go down uh, momentarily, but it climbed right back up. So technically, from the beginning of March, its its return is zero percent, which compared to the markets, that is pretty pretty good. And Walmart is another company that I'm keeping my eyes on here, which, like Target, like Amazon, if my memory is correct, they've been hiring as well. And this stock, guys, is not down really at all. This is a funky-looking chart, I'll be honest. I would not trade this stock. This looks very difficult to, uh, to kind of break down. But honestly, the whole year of this past, or not really the whole year, but the past six months, this stock's been flat. It hovered 117 for a lot of 2019 into 2020. We got that pop to 128. Now now, we, um, now we're at 120. So the stock's really just down about um, 7% during this whole CV craziness. So this is a time period. What I'm trying to kind of show you guys is this is a time period where you kind of see which companies shine and which companies are kind of thrown in the dumpster. Not literally, but kind of figuratively, right? Which ones are worse, let's put it that way, in terms of kind of how they stand in a uh, economic collapse. So that's interesting. Keep an eye on that, guys, heading forward here, as things probably will get worse, in my opinion, like I've been saying in these videos. So let's go over natural gas, NGK20. This is interesting. Um, last week, I traded UGAS, DGAS, and I said on Friday that you know, I was joking that I was going to get into DGAS, which I don't trade, I don't hold leverage ETFs, ETNs overnight, but I was joking I was going to get into DGAS due to the overall pattern here on natural gas, and it seems like now that we're watching some uh, some action here in the futures, DGAS is going to be, it could be, into heading into tomorrow, a pretty viable play. And if you guys don't know DGAS, it goes up whenever natural gas is going down. And let me pull that up for you, DGAS. And this is a leveraged ETN. It took a pretty big beating on a Friday as natural gas saw a pretty ridiculous rally. If you guys see it, it went from 156 up to 165. But in general, I'm thinking this downtrend, technically speaking, 
is going to continue, at least based off of what we're seeing now. And if, let's say, we break upwards, that's a whole different story. That will be bullish. That means you guys, which is the inverse of you guys, will be a better play. But overall, I'm watching both of these as they have been making me money recently, and this past week I did do well with them, so they're on my watch list as always. And a bunch of other ones here, well not really a bunch, we already went over a lot that I wanted to go to and go over in today's video, but gold slash GC, I actually haven't looked at this one myself yet. Okay, it's down about a dollar right now, nothing crazy, down about 0.05%. So this one's holding pretty flat here as the markets are still up, the uh, S&P futures, they're still up about 30 points, and an ETF I like to uh, play whenever I'm looking at trading gold is uh, GLD, which is a Spider Gold Trust ETF. And this simply follows the price of gold. It's a great way to kind of have exposure to gold, although I do like having physical gold more than uh, actually owning this ETF, although I do own it in my M1 Finance account. And if you guys actually want to see the, the physical gold unboxing, I'll leave a video link down below in the description box. I just got about 15 grams of gold shipped to my place this past week. So go check that video out if you haven't done so already. So that is really what I wanted to go over in today's video. The the DGAS play, that is huge. I'm watching that heading into tomorrow. Oh, and a bunch of um a bunch of other ones that I'm watching. I almost forgot. Not a bunch, but one in general is CCL. You guys know I bought some uh longer term put contracts. Not not longer term. They actually expire, I believe, on the 22nd of May, if I remember correctly. But I bought some $4 puts. A bit risky, um, but that's the move I'm making right now on CCL because, honestly, I do think they are going lower. Their business is at standstill right now. And, uh, hey, maybe I, I was thinking, guys, I never went into this crash. And you guys know, um, especially if you've been watching my videos, I wasn't planning on buying CCL. But if it does get to the $4 range, $3 range, especially if those put contracts make me some decent money, I might just put that and buy some shares of CCL kind of as a spec position, right? You guys know I hold NEO, which is a Chinese um, electric vehicle company. This is a spec stock. This is a company that could go bankrupt. And CCL is a company that could go bankrupt. So that is what I consider a spec stock in today's environment. And I would take a flyer on it at 5 bucks. I was even considering it at $7. I'll be honest with you guys. And, you know, this could be a good opportunity and uh, that's just my honest opinion. If it gets to four or five bucks, three bucks, I will probably buy like a thousand bucks worth um, just as a spec play, maybe two thousand bucks to kind of keep it long term. And if I lose the money, I wouldn't really care. And uh, if the company turns around, maybe comes back. I'm not I'm not thinking it's going to get back to 70 bucks. I'm not a daydreamer, guys. That's probably not going to happen. But if you pick up shares at five bucks and this company swings up, even back to 15, 20 bucks within the next two to three years. That could be a fantastic gain. And one thing to remember is CCL did, um, they did cut their dividends for, I believe it is 18 months. So that's some stuff to consider there with CCL. And maybe the same with the airlines. I'm not interested in buying any airlines. In fact, Warren Buffett, which I just remembered now that we're talking about airlines, he sold out of a bunch of airlines this past week. His biggest holdings are Delta, Southwest, and American, if I'm not mistaken. And that's pretty huge, guys. So expect, not not because... um he's selling, but expect more downside in these airline stocks due to the environment that we're in. It's clear that Buffett, since he's selling, he's probably looking to raise capital, but he probably does see some more um, downside as well. Let's be honest, guys, and I'd love to know what you have to think about 
that down below in the comments as well as CCL and as well as a bunch of other stocks and ETFs you're watching and your thoughts on the market. I would love to know what you guys have to think, so don't be shy. Drop that comment, and if you guys in did enjoy this video, might as well end it off here. Hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see further content like this. And if you guys want free stocks, who doesn't want free stocks? Check out my affiliate link down below with We bull all you have to do is deposit a hundred bucks and you actually get two free stocks valued up to 1400 bucks which is incredible so go get that link down below in the description box thank you all for watching i'll catch you all in the next video peace out stay safe as always see you guys